What is going on? This is Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the endocrine glands. Today, it's time to talk about the thyroid gland and the hormones secreted by the thyroid gland. We call them thyroid hormone, and they include T3 and T4. Which one is more abundant? T4. Which one is more active? T3. The thyroid hormone is like the stove or the oven of your body. It lets your body on fire. What do you mean by that? It boosts your metabolic rate. This is my biology playlist where we talk about the basics. But if you are a pro, check out my endocrinology playlist. The CEO gives commands to the general managers, which gives commands to the employees, which have to listen to the manager. Others don't listen to the manager, and these are the independent contractors. Who is the CEO? The hypothalamus. General manager is the pituitary. The employees are the thyroid, adrenal cortex, gonads. They listen to the pituitary. The independent contractors are parathyroid, adrenal medulla, not cortex, and pancreas. Today, we're talking about one of those employees that has to listen to the boss. So here's the CEO. The CEO want to talk to the thyroid. So the hypothalamus will secrete TRH thyrotropin releasing hormone which will go to the pituitary specifically the anterior pituitary this anterior pituitary is going to secrete tsh tsh is going to go and talk to the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland is going to respond by secreting t3 and t4 which one is more abundant t4 that's why t4 can be known as the thyroid hormone Hypothalamus secretes TRH, goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete TSH, which goes to the thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormone. What if we secreted too much thyroid hormone? Don't worry about it. Negative feedback. This excessive thyroid hormone is going to inhibit the TRH from the hypothalamus, and it's going to inhibit the TSH from the anterior pituitary. Let's say that we have a patient who has low levels of thyroid hormone. What do you call this? I call this hypothyroidism. Okay, now what's the cause of this hypothyroidism? It could be a problem in the thyroid gland, it could be a problem in the anterior pituitary, or it could be a problem in the hypothalamus. If the problem is in the thyroid gland, we call this primary hypothyroidism. If the problem is one step ahead in the anterior pituitary, we'll call this secondary hypothyroidism. If the problem is two steps ahead, we call this tertiary hypo thyroidism. The end result of all of this is a patient with low levels of thyroid hormone and therefore a low metabolic rate. I'm tired. I'm lazy. I'm depressed. I'm obese. I'm constipated. Everything is slow. Here's your hypothalamus secreting thyrotropin releasing hormone. To release what? The thyrotropin. Who's the thyrotropin? TSH. Thyroid stimulating hormone is also known as thyrotropin. Thyroid stimulating hormone is going to go and stimulate um, the thyroid. No, duh. Now the thyroid is going to secrete thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Don't forget that the thyroxine or the thyroid hormone is part of the lipid soluble family as we have discussed before. What's the raw material when it comes to the amino acids? It's an amino acid known as tyrosine. That's the raw material needed to make thyroid hormone. There is also another raw material, and that's called iodine. So in order for you to cook some doozy delicious thyroid hormone, you need two components, tyrosine and iodine. Where do I get tyrosine? Well, it's one of the amino acids in your body. Your body makes tyrosine from another amino acid, which is called phenylalanine. Where do I get phenylalanine? From food. You eat proteins. Proteins become amino acids, including phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is going to give you tyrosine. Okay, where do I get my iodine from? From nature. If you live near a sea coast, you will get iodine from the sea. It's just nature. What if I live in the inwards, in the desert? Uh, well, you need to eat some iodized salt. Or anything iodized. Where's the thyroid gland? It's this beauty in your neck. What's the name of that? That's the arch of the aorta. What are the three branches that come out of the arch? This is brachiocephalic artery, formerly known as the arterium innominatum. Then you have the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. Let's go to your head. Let's go to your left arm. Let's go to your head. Let's go to your right arm. 
thyroid gland secretes four hormones. T4, that's the main one. T3, that's the most active one. Reverse T3, not active. And calcitonin, because it will weaken and decrease your calcium level in the blood. We'll talk about that in the next video. Let's dig deeper into the thyroid. Okay, the thyroid has beautiful follicles. Cool. And these follicles are surrounding the lumen of the thyroid. Thank you. What does it have? Colloid, which is basically a protein. Thank you so much. Okay. Around those follicles, you have what? Para-follicular cells. Cells that are parallel to the follicle. Wow, this is so hard. Shut up. Now to the function. What's the function of those thyroid follicles? They make thyroid hormone. That's why we call them A cells, the most important cells. Okay, thank you. How about the parafollicular cells? They are clear, they make calcitonin, and we call them the C cells. What are the raw materials needed to make thyroid hormone? Well, you need iodine and you need tyrosine. Where do I find them in my body? Well, there is a carrier carrying them for you. And this carrier is called thyroglobulin, which is a globulin, which means it's a protein. Let's say that I live near the sea, so I get some iodide in my body. Now this iodide is in the blood. Okay, this iodide will go into my thyroid gland. Thank you. And then let's bring one iodide and another iodide. Let's combine them together to make iodine. Now the iodine is in my thyroid follicle. What do I do with it? Three things. Oxidation, organification, and coupling. Who's the hero of these three processes? A beautiful enzyme known as thyroperoxidase. Why ACE? Because it's an enzyme. Why thyro? Because it's in the thyroid gland. Why peroxide? Because this is a peroxidation reaction. Let's do this, people. I had some iodide in my bloodstream because I live near the sea or because I eat iodized salt. This iodide is gonna enter into my thyroid gland. Okay, thank you. Let's trap it and keep it inside the gland. Otherwise, it's gonna go back to the blood. All right, thank you. And then get one iodide, another iodide, lump them together. Now you have iodine or iodine. And this is called oxidation. That's why you need peroxidase. Now, you see this iodine? Yep. Let's bring some thyroglobulin. Why? Because it's the carrier. What do you have? I have some tyrosine for you. Get some of that tyrosine plus some iodine. And now you have mono iodotyrosine. Okay. Or if you do this twice and bring two of these, now you'll have di iodotyrosine. And then let's start coupling. Let's couple one of these with one of these. So you have one mono and one die, one plus two equals three, thank you so much, or you can couple one of these and one of these. So two die, two plus two is four. This is the story of the T3 and T4. Triiodothyronine, tetraiodothyronine. And you take those lovely people and put them in the bloodstream so that they can boost your metabolic rate. Oxidation, organification, coupling. The hero is my thyroperoxidase. Who secretes TSH? The anterior pituitary. Under an order from whom? From the hypothalamus. What does TSH do? Stimulates the thyroid gland. All right. And when I stimulate the thyroid gland, I increase the synthesis of T4 and T3, thyroid hormone. I also increase the size of the thyroid gland. And when the gland in your neck gets larger, your neck will swell, and we call this goiter. Okay, thyroid hormone. Do you belong in the insulin world, or do you belong to the glucagon world? Remember, the vast majority of hormones are here in the glucagon world, which means they are catabolic. They break down stuff. They destroy stuff to give me some energy. I need them in my fasting state. Insulin alone is here. All the other hormones are here. Growth hormone is dancing in the middle. Since thyroid hormone is here, thyroid is protein catabolic, glycogen catabolic, triglycerides catabolic. Your thyroid hormone is catabolic, protein catabolic, break down the protein into amino acids, glycogen catabolic, break down the glycogen into glucose, and lipid catabolic, break down those triglycerides into small free fatty acids. 
What's the function of thyroid hormone? It's the stove of your body. It's the oven. It increases your basal metabolic rate. It boosts your metabolism, raising your body temperature, increasing your oxygen consumption. It's very important for brain development, especially during embryology and during childhood. That's why patients who suffer from congenital hypothyroidism have low IQ. Thyroid hormone belongs to the glucagon world. Who else belongs to the glucagon world? Catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, etc. Therefore, thyroid hormone is going to help his family. I'm going to help catecholamines. Help them do what? I'm going to increase the number and the sensitivity of the beta receptor so that when the catecholamine comes and binds to the beta receptor, you get more catabolic activity. Thyroid hormone will boost the ovarian cycle in females. It's going to boost spermatogenesis in males. And that's why if you have very low thyroid hormone, you can get what? Infertility, menstrual irregularities, etc. Also, thyroid hormone is going to increase your gastrointestinal motility. And therefore, if you have too much thyroid hormone called hyperthyroidism, you get diarrhea too much motility. But if you have hypothyroidism, too little thyroid hormone, you get constipation, no motility. Now, if you're just getting started, focus on the symptoms. Don't try to focus a lot on this because you will lose your mind. So let's compare between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Symptoms, hypothyroidism, everything is slow. Hyperthyroidism, everything is super fast. Hypo, let's go. Heart is slow, called bradycardia. How about I, I'm, I'm like, can I tolerate cold? No, you can't because you have no metabolism. Cold intolerance, you're always cold constipated, your gut is not moving, coarse hair, your hair is not silky, depression, dry yellow skin, myxedema, menorrhagia, lethargy, loss of the outer one third of the eyebrow, no one knows why. It could be because you get coarse hair and the hair on the outer third of the eyebrow is like more vulnerable or something, so you lose it. Hoarseness of voice, weight gain, you're sad, you're lazy, you're obese, you're slow, you're depressed. You're constipated, you're cold, you're so lethargic. But on the other hand, if you're hyperthyroid, look at this, take a card, increase heart rate, nervousness, I'm anxious, I'm sweating, I'm staring at you, I have tremors in my hand, I'm heat intolerant, I have diarrhea right now, I'm can I can ruin your life, I have warm, moist, that's the only thing that's good. My skin is lovely and my hair is silky, but my neck is super large, goiter, and I'm staring at you with my eyes bulging outwards exothalamus. But on the bright side, I lost weight because my metabolism is super duper fast. What's the cheapest way to diagnose hyperthyroidism? Oh, MRI of the brain. Oh, shut up. The cheapest way is to ask for an old driver's license or an ID. Here is Sam in the past. Here is Sam now. What happened to Sam? Hyperthyroidism. What if Sam was like this in the past, but is like this right now? It could be hypothyroidism. But hey, medicosis, uh, wouldn't the patient notice the change? No, because it's very gradual. The patient will not notice. But when you put the two pictures next to each other, everyone will notice. Poor Sam. Also, poor Um Kalthum. Um Kalthum was a famous Egyptian singer. She developed hyperthyroidism and she was really sad about this because if you're a singer and you're sweating, if you're having tremors, palpitations, weight loss, diarrhea, ink, well, that's not good. The only thing that was good for her, uh, silky hair, of course. Who else is gonna tell you these stories? Your woke professor with his theories? Oh, give me a break. If you like this video, check out my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetics.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course. And we have extended this discount. You can get 40% discount off anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY. May all your juxtaglomerular nephrons be intact. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.